Hi, my name is Vineet, and today I'm going to show you how to use DAC functions using a NI data acquisition device in LabVIEW. I actually have a USB data acquisition device here. I've got a function generator that's generating a sine wave connected to analog input channel 0, and I've got this device connected over USB over to my laptop. I've already got an initial program written here, so I can hit Run, and you can see I'm taking measurements and acquiring from my sine wave. If I'd like, I can change the amplitude of my sine wave and change the frequency, and I'm able to take measurements. Well, if you look at the block diagram over here, the code that I'm using is actually taking advantage of the DAC Assistant, which is a configuration-based way to interact with my hardware. The DAC Assistant, under the hood, uses NIDAC-MX driver software. And that driver software is actually what's used to communicate between the hardware connected to my computer and the programming language that I'm using, in this case, LabVIEW. I can use the DAC Assistant to interact with that driver software, or I can actually programmatically configure how I want to take measurements using functions. And so I'm going to show you how to do that now. Let's start off by creating a brand new VI, or virtual instrument. I'm going to move the front panel over to the side here. And if I right click on the block diagram, I can go through the different palettes. And instead of using the Express palette, which is where I originally got my DAC Assistant from, I can go down to the Measurement I.O. palette and tack down the Data Acquisition palette. If I open up the Help file here, as I hover over these functions, you can see these are basically the building blocks for configuring a data acquisition application. And I can start by dropping down the DACMX Create Virtual Channel VI. Once I drop this down, I can right-click on this physical channel input and create a constant. And if I use the drop-down menu here, you can see I can have access to all of the different analog input channels that I have available to me. In this case, I'm going to choose analog input 0, because that's what I'm connected to on my USB data acquisition device. And this function basically takes the physical channel, the pin that I'm connecting to, and converts it to a software virtual channel, where I can add properties to my measurement. I can adjust scaling and add timing and triggering information. So this is basically how I can start to create a, a virtual instrument. Next, I'm going to start to configure my timing parameters. And so I'm going to drop down this DACMX timing VI or function. And I'm going to wire from the create virtual channel function over to the timing function. And that'll pass that task reference over to the, uh, the other programming functions that I have. And I'm going to right click on the rate input and create a constant. And this is where I can configure the number of samples per second that I'd like to take. So in this case, I want to take, let's say, 100,000 samples per second, or 100 kilohertz. Next, I'm going to configure my sample mode. And so I can right click and create a constant for that. And instead of taking a finite samples, I want to be able to acquire my sine wave over and over and over again. So I'm going to choose continuous samples. And that way, I can stream continuous data across, my, across the USB bus into my computer. And then next, I want to drop down the DACMX start task function. So once I drop this down, I can wire in my task. And this is what actually then begins the acquisition. So this is where my USB device will start taking measurements. Once I start taking measurements, I'd like to be able to read those measurements into LabVIEW. So I'm going to drop down the DACMX read VI. And now when I wire in my task, I'll be able to get access to the data that I'm acquiring and bring that into LabVIEW. I'm going to Use this drop-down menu here and choose analog input single channel, since I'm just measuring from one channel. And I'm going to choose to do multiple samples, so I can look at multiple measurements at a time and use a, a waveform graph to be able to view that data. Now again, because I'm taking continuous samples, I want to drop down a loop, because I'd like this read function to execute over and over and over again until, uh, until I tell it to stop. And so I'm going to just drop down the loop around DACMX read. And you can see a stop button was automatically created for me here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And let me drop down a graph in order to then be able to see my data on the user interface or the front panel. Next, I'm going to wire my data output over to the waveform graph from the read VI. And that's basically all I need to view my data. The last thing I need to do for my program to finish things off is I want to be able to end my task or, or clear my task in order to free up resources. And so I'm going to drop down DACMX clear task function outside my loop so that when my loop stops, I can free up resources and um, 
and then I'll be all ready to go for my next program. So I'm going to wire in my terminals here. And I also want to be able to specify the number of samples that I'd like to read in my loop. So I'm going to create a constant for that. Let's say I want to read 10,000 samples every time that loop executes. So I'm basically done. I can hit run. And now you can see the sine wave is being generated on the graph. I'm going to make this line a little bit thicker so you can see it more easily. And I can go through and change my amplitude, make my sine wave a little bit bigger. I can slow it down or speed it up. And I've basically now programmatically created a data acquisition application, which is very similar to what I saw with the DAC assistant. If I put them side by side, you can see I'm basically doing the same thing, but I've got two different approaches. And the benefit for programmatically doing it is now I have access to low-level timing and triggering information. I can synchronize with multiple devices and have access to all the low-level task properties. And that way I have a lot more flexibility in how I program my data acquisition application.